How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today we're back with another rank video going over this time the rares for the first set of Fusion World being Awakened Bolts. So we'll be doing the exact same thing, let's do a lot with the uncommons and uncommons and we've got the same tiers, we've got the busted tier, strong tier, decent, okay or trash. And we got a uh, we got a lot less than we had before. We got, there's a lot more commons than uncommons. We got a few more to go through, so it should go a lot quicker. And we're gonna have a look and see where we put these, uh, well, these cards for each of the colors. So we we'll start off again from red to blue to green, to yellow. And before we get into the vi into the video, you can also uh, help out because we're on our way still to a thousand subs. And we're on here, we're on our way. What you can do to help is. Give a like to the video, comment down below, and also, most importantly, subscribe. It keeps you updated with my videos as and when they drop. And also, by clicking the notification bell, you can get alerts when my videos do drop, so that way you're aware to watch them then. Or save them and know uh, that they're available to watch at a later date, or a later time. So, without out of the way, let's get into the video, and let's uh, rank these cards. So, with the rares, this should probably be, a, well, as I said, it's going to be quicker, so the rest of them, but it should be a bit more interesting because this word effects get a little bit stronger because they're a higher rarity, not the highest rarity, but still, like, they're like the middle rarity, and some of them have very strong effects that like we've seen with the last two. And there was only one busted card we saw from the commons, same with the uncommons, and a fair few, very strong cards, but then not too many trash cards. We haven't seen too many cards that are quite bad. We've seen, um, they're mostly quite decent, the cards, like on average. So let's have a look at this. We'll start off with the first one being Krillin. So, Krillin here. His effect is, is not great because he's a 4 cost 15k. So already you're probably thinking that's uh, quite low for a 4 cost. Well, you would be right because that is quite low for a 4 cost. And it's not really redeemed in much ever in like many other ways. It's just the four cost fifteen k, so already weak power to its cost. Is a ten k combo though, so it's got that going for him. But his skill is when attacking, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, and it gets to minus twenty k power for the turn. So that's quite a decent effect. That is quite decent. You know the swing and minus twenty k that can like either make it a lot easier to kill things, minus things by twenty k. It also can get rid of things for 20k, it's a really good effect, and with the U7 leader, it goes up to 20k, so it's then at least frightening Awakened leaders, but then you're paying 4 for it, and 4 with such a low co low power, like it's a strong effect, great combo power, but it's such low power that it, it's not really worth running, when you can do everything, like everything things can do for less cost, you can do as equal as good things. And red doesn't really draw too much either. Like red, like it's very lacking in draw power. Like if you look at the cards, all of cards in red, the only cards that really gain you a card, you've got the Android um, 18 Searcher, which I think we've seen, and that uh, only looks for Android 17 Krillin. So you can find this, but it's got limited targets, and there's only like two each of each target, and. So that's the card that can gain you something. You've got the extra card that can kind of gain you something, but like it most likely is not going to whiff as long as you're building your deck correctly. But then you saw I'll pay one to uh, use that, and then the only other cards that really gain you anything, like an extra card, is really well. The, there's the U6 extra card as well. And there's the cantrip and lead that's going to draw you cards. So it's, you don't really particularly draw for your deck that that quickly in um, red, and. You want to be basically making them as much use from your cards as possible. I'm paying for just for like this card, which is going to probably be quite impactful when it when it comes down the swings, but it's going to be very easily removed on the next turn. Um, I would say it's like I wouldn't say it's busted. I wouldn't say it's strong. I would, however, say it's decent because it's got going for it a good like good combo power. It's got a good effect. It's just the power of it is let down by its cost. So like the cost is let, it's let down by the power compared to the cost, which is not the best. If it was a, if it was one energy cheaper, that would be pretty decent, for, even for 15k. But four energy gets quite a bit in red when you want to make all your energy count and make sure you're playing things um, to get the most benefit out of them. So that's great. So starting off, we've already got a decent card. Like, uh, it's just lit down by the power, but I still think it is very good because its effect is very strong and it's got combat power. And it's even searchable, like we said, with the Android 18 searcher. And the next one we've got in our next rare is we got Gohan. So Gohan is a free drop 20k, so already 
and like Krillin, like decent combo, like decent power to cost ratio. So if I can combo because it's got good power and it's got good effect, and that effect is on play, choose all your opponent's battle cards and they get minus 10k power for the turn. So this is really nice because uh, you'll get some decks that are, or some colors that will build up a board of like low cost cards to kind of gain benefits from it or just have them. Like even with every color's got a cantrip, putting cantrips out to then go, right, I'm going to use these like combo for combo essentially for free out of swings later on in the game. I have those so sit round ready to do that, and go on is a good way, good way to just basically get rid of them. Like if you've got opponents got, like been playing cantrips for the first few turns, not really using them, saving there for when you awake, they awaken, so you can start comboing out easily. And you've dropped drop this down, you just wipe the board off them, especially in like things like yellow when you've got some weaker cards that they can like with freezer. They got cards that come out that get benefits, such like searching and drawing cards. And you pwn this down, make them all a lot cheap, like uh, cheaper to remove, or remove the little ones and things like that. It's really handy just getting rid of the like the really low co low powered cards off the board that they got there that they have got the effect of like searches and cantrips, and then use them later on to combo with. This is really good for doing that. And then even with the U7 leader, like remember, they've got a big benefit in any of the U7 cards because they get that benefit of extra 5k power offensively from the lead. So even then, you've got this as well. So I would say this is a strong card, like nice, it can wipe out a fair few cards, which is great. Because minus 10k, while it's not a massive amount, it's still a good amount, hitting a majority of uh, low costing things that people save for, like, defensive combo. So, that's going straight into strong tier, very good card, and it's not really, even though it's 5k, it's still got combo power, it's the main thing. And it's still 25k offensively with the U7 leader, minus the effort by 10k, making it easy to control your opponent's board as well, it's really nice. And then we go to next rare, and this is Frost. So, a universe 6 already. Remember what we said to the other ones? Any universe 6, normally they're kind of like, um, they get like a negative view because of the universe 6, and they've got no real like, leader support their self. Like, they're very good universe 6 cards, but they don't have a leader to benefit that arch um, trait, whereas universe 7 do. So, it's already got a negative on that, but it's still just like go on a free cost 20, 20k, so pretty good cost of power. Tinker combos got an edge over that, and it's got a permanent where your opponent's battle cards with 20k power or less can attack. Now I'm going to say this is decent because it's not amazing. Don't get me wrong, it is it is it is good, but it's not amazing. That's the thing because it is really only like this is a card that will be sided in, well not sided in, main in red decks because it helps against. Uh, one a color which is yellow. Like yellow has a fair few like 20k that can like, give you um, a core that you can start dropping 20 like a load of 20k so you can start hitting you down over and over little weenie swings to force you to come out of each one and then waste combo power. And Frost is a great way to like get around on that, but that's the only time you're going to use it really because blue can just bounce it straight off the board because lim yellow's got quite limited removal for by effects. It's normally like, like control things by locking them down or then just attacking into them. And against things like red, it's going to get negged down. Against green, it's going to get popped. And it's not going to make it much use against green. And then against blue, it's just going to be bounced off the board or spun from the, to the bottom of the deck. So in all but one colour, it's not going to be useful. But you need you kind of need it for that one colour for yellow. So I'm going to put it as in, it's uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Because it's, it's basically there for just deal with one colour. Which has limited, like, very limited ways to kind of deal with it. But um, against the other colours, it's not great. So that's Frost that way. And then we got another Unit 6 being uh, Thor. So this is a 2 cost 5k power. So already very bad power for cost. You normally get 5k on like 1 drops. So 10k combo, so we've got that going for it. And its effect is on play. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it gets minus 15k power for the turn. Now, it's got a good effect. It's got a very good effect and good combo power. But the f fact is, it's in universe six. It's a universe six card, where it's got no leader to benefit. We will get that in, in, in well, future sets. We get a universe six card that actually benefit from it in red. But until then, it's you're not going to be paying universe six over universe seven at the moment. But it has a decent effect. But uh, it goes well with Beerus being a minus fifteen card, fifteen cent by two for two energy, and then the leader minus it by fair over ten. So you can get rid of twenty five k's, fight for two energy from that. But then you've got the Beerus SR, which we we'll get into in another video. And its power is only 5k, so it's very easy to get like moves off the board in red. And it's not really doing much outside just coming down and doing a power and combo off. And for that, I feel it's quite it's decent. Because it can come, yeah, like as I said, you pay 2 energy, come down, minus up by 15k, 
and then swing in combat off as a 10k is not too bad but then it's just let down by its power but then if it had more power it kind of would be a little bit too like well a bit too good I'm gonna do like if it had more power to actually make use of like swinging and things like that but yeah it's kind of decent because it's good room is like a good you know, 15k is a good amount but you got some cards that only like make fight like a hit SR which you see in, in another video as well most only about 5k for the same kind of cost but then having bigger power is uh, I feel this is quite decent. Then we've got um, Vegeta here. So Vegeta is a two cost twenty k, so already great power. The cost ratio is the same as a if it was a skillless only five k combo because it's got a uh, great power and then it's got an effect. So the permanent on this guy, that's all the only skills got is permanent. It's in your turn. This guy gets one k power. Oh no, sorry, ten k power. What's in battle with a bonus battle card? So this is really nice to help deal with your opponent's board, but the thing is you can just do that by minusing it off by effects. You can use it like uh, use things to minus it down, to s swing with other things, and then have those other boards like Go Drop Gohan, minus it, minus your opponent's whole board so you can swing it to all of them better. And it's just 20k if you want it's at least a 20k swing at lead, and even then with the U7 thing, it's a uh, lead it stem basically a 25, and then a 35 into battle cards. So that's always doing is just helping kill your board, which red can then do by effects, but then it also helps against things like green, where they got right quite big bodies and you can only minus a certain amount. So I'd say this is um Yeah, probably say it's decent. So help the is, is a big thing this uh swing for battle cards remember I'm swinging twenty in the twenty K, you're swinging the thirty K, unless you're with the U seven lead and you're thirty five, you get five eight K from that. So it's a nice way to help like push through and twenty um, and two only two costs. Well, it's quite nice to do that. Like your opponent putting that like pay five energy to put down a thirty five k, and then you just drop this for two energy. You have the same amount of power and swing their battle card to kind of force them to combo out of it. But then actually, I feel like it's it's, it's only okay. You're still paying two energy to swing to a battle card because it's no real big benefit going to the lead. And there's other things you can play if you focus on swinging the lead. So I say this is de this is okay. It's not too like amazing. The next we got another unit of six, we got Patamo. So this is a another two cost twenty K, so already good comp good um power to cost. Only five K combo and its effect is it can't be ca is per well, it's permanent is this kind of can't be cared in battle. Now this is not trash. At the very least it's not trash because the nice thing is it can't be cared by battle. And it but it's gonna be exactly the same as Frost. To be honest, this could be exactly the same as Frost because once again red can neg it. So you don't have to worry about that, negative down to zero, then it dies. Blue can just bounce off the board. Green can just pop it with effects. And then it's yellow, it can't really deal with this too much because they have limited removal. Same with Frost, they have limited removal by effects. They can lock it down, so it can't be used. So it's quite a nice thing, but it can just lock it down so it can't attack. But then it can't, doesn't have really have a way to get rid of it. If you're using uh, effects to lock this down, then you've got other things that could be more threat that are not locking down instead. And if they're not locking down that and even this, then it can't really deal with it. So I'll say this is okay because once again it's just like Frost, which is only really good against uh, yellow, just to keep it out and have thing like a attack that you can keep swinging with every turn that your opponent can't really deal with. Then we got the last card being the red extra card, Tournament of Power Arena. So the first fill card we ever saw from the reveals, and only the second one in the game. It's only two in the game currently, and. This is a two cost fill card with effect, which is activate battle. Switch this card to rest mode as a cost. Choose your leader up to one of your battle cards and it gets minus, uh, plus 5k power for the battle. Now, I'm going to say this is trash. Like, you might people not like, agree with this, but I feel this is trash because it's just an extra, it's an extra card that uh, you can't really search because it's just the only tag it's got is World of, World of Void. It doesn't have a universe tag or anything like that, it's just World of Void. And it costs two energy put down and. You've got to see it to like turn off the. T you got to actually see it to drop it, and you're not really getting any like any threats. Or you're not like a battle card where you drop it, get an effect off, and then can combo off or anything like that. So it's not getting that much of an effect. It's just, and you can't even use it both in like both players' turn every turn. If you could, if it was just every turn, 5k power to a battle card or leader, that would be that would be good. That would be pretty good because it'd be worth the fact that it's an extra card and dead in certain situations, like defensively. But the fact that you have to switch to rest and use it means that if you use it defensively, you can't use it offensively. Well, if you use it offensively, sorry, you can't use it defensively to help out. And 
yeah, just to fill this card is great. Like, it's, it's a deck card in hand, defensively, because it's an extra card. You have to see it, and if you don't see it and don't see it till later in the game, or later in the game, then you just got, you, you're not really playing properly on curve, not playing things effectively, and it just doesn't feel great. So I feel this is a trash card, and there's no real point in using it. But that's just me. Let me know if you uh, disagree or your thoughts on it, and that would be nice to see, to see if there's, someone's got a, like, a good opinion about why, or a good view about why it should be played, and what good benefits it gives. But yeah, that is it for red, so for we got through red quite quickly. And yeah, so we've got uh, Gohan is strong, we've got Krillin and Fuwa's decent cards, and Frost, Vegeta, Batama being okay, and then the Tournament Power Arena is quite a trash card so far. Now we go into blue. So we're starting off with probably the <laughs> worst Irish type blue has, which is the Goku Black one. And we got the first one being a the Goku Black Rare. So the 3 cost 20k, take a power, on play if you have 7 or fewer cards in hand, draw 1. So already, decent cost of power, good combo power in 10k, on play if you have 7 or fewer cards, draw 1, so it's a basic cantrip, but then um, only if you've got 7 or fewer cards in hand, which is like the theme of blue being, if you have a low hand size, get some additional effects. And I'm already going to say this is this is just okay. It's not trash, because it's still, replace, it's still drawing a card as a cantrip, but there's ever... There's better things you could do for free energy, or better plays you can make. Like it's good as an option in Goku Black, but then that deck is it, it is pretty poor. Like there's so much like you need to do too much for its arch type, and they have to even make some of the cards skillless, which is just made even worse. But um, yeah, it's just an, it's an okay card, not amazing, but um, like. In a pinch, it's like, just decent, like free energy, like, like free energy about like beat 16 you know, threat and awaken leaders, that draws a card, and good combo power. But there's better things you can do for like cost, so it's an okay card. That's it. Uh, the next one we've got is just Goku. So it's uh, we got a two cost Goku, 15k power, so quite weak for two cost, like it's not really good for threat and awaken leaders. Take a combo, so it's at least good combo power, and its effect is on play. You choose up to one of your battle cards with a cost four or more and return to your hand as the cost. So, because it's got up two, you can choose zero, so you don't have to worry about having something on board to bounce back. It's up two, so you can choose zero. I don't know if they're going to correct that with any, um, like an errata or anything, because the last time, when they've done that in masses before, put effects where like, it costs up to, they normally don't come back and errata it later on because they made a mistake in translating it. So, I don't know if that's how it is, but. Uh, Hopefully there's no ratters like there's masters, that would, that would be annoying. But still, you could choose nothing to bounce back just to, for the cost, just if you want to, just the cost additional if you want to pass something back. And then the effect is choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, which is in his hand. So, that's not too bad, just on play, you can bounce back anything on your opponent's board back to hand. So, later on in the turn, bounce back something big about the hand so they can then uh, have to re like, play it again. Um, I don't think this is great. Like, uh, it is blue's really only way to remove anything. So it's like blue's only way to remove anything of any cost. But it puts them back in the hand and a lot of big things that you want to get rid of that you can't remove from the other cards in blue. They normally have on play effects, like the big A drop Broly. On play pop a card and draw a card. And then it swings twice. You got the androids which on play pop two um two free costs or less. You've got the Gohan Secret Rare. That comes down and nukes the board, and you have things like a uh, Goku. Oh, there's the Goku Black, but no one's playing that. Um, but yeah, many against reading, you got to be thinking, hit, hit things that you ever cards can't, and you just put it back in hand. So I don't. I think this is. I think this is not a good card. Just put, you basically pen to energy, you put it back in your board. It doesn't do anything else apart from being a 10k combo. It doesn't really be. It can't be really be offensive. So we just got it. Yeah, trash. Not a good card. Then we've got this, uh, the next one being Trunks, we've got two Trunks cards for the next one, so we'll first start off with the first one being the 2 cost 30k, and I feel this is strong, because it's a 2 cost 30k, that's 10k combo, and so 2 energy, put a 30k on the board that can put some pressure on, that means your opponent has to then use a super combo, a battle trick, or 2 cards just to combo out of it, even when they're awakened. 10k combo as well, so at the very least combo power, it does have a... Slight downside in that he's got when attacking at the end of the turn, place a card on the bottom of the deck. But you put this in 
you put this um, you put this card with the time machine, means that even though you're paying two energy swing, you can then for one energy bring it back later in the turn. And we know that time machine is loopable with Pilaf to be able to get it back and then kind of do that over and over again, like a nice little core. So I feel this is a very strong card, two energy, thirty k, very good. And even its downside can be uh, mitigated by another card, which is really good to go with it. Then we've got the other trunks being this one, so this one is a 4 cost, 25k, so not too bad with the power to cost. 5k combo, has critical, critical is always a good skill, meaning your opponent isn't going to take the damage if you decide to take it. And an on play where you choose up to one battle card with energy cost of 3, and return to the zone hand. Now, I don't think this is good, like for the cost, for what it can do, like it's better plays in green, like, uh, well, sorry, it's better kit plays in blue for, um, well, not for the same energy. Well, not for the same energy. I can't remember what many, like how many things there are in blue at the four costs. But I think there's many. But it's not a great one. Like it's got critical, it's good, but you pay four energy for just a 25k, where you can pay less energy for things that have almost the same amount of power, just a little bit less. And it's not really something you can benefit too much, like looping with trunks or anything like that, because it's uh, too out of cost. You can't play it, come swing, and then bounce back to hand to keep it safe. And it's effective bounce back off three costs or less. Yeah, it's good if you want to reestablish, but if you're bouncing back, most things you're going to be bouncing back like that, that are like threats or anything, that are three costs or less, are normally going to have on play. And most of the time, if they've got three costs or less, they've they normally swung with it. So you might as well just swing into it rather than give it back its combo power. So I think this is just okay because critical is good, but its effect isn't great and its stats aren't the best. The next one we got is a Vegeta. That is 4 cost, and only 20k, so quite low power to its cost, only 5k combo, but it's got a pretty nice effect, which is when attacking once per turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with a cost 1 or less, and place it at the bottom of his own deck, and switch his card to active mode. So this is automatically a dual attacker. Dual, ca dual attack for 20k, so 4 energy to get essentially 2 20k swings, you're paying, yeah, you're getting 2 20k swings out of 4 energy, which is not too bad. And you're also bottom decking one of your opponents one cost or less. So if they got can trips or anything that kinda of like save themselves to out combo a little bit easier on a swing, you got this to kinda of just get rid of it. And bottom deck is a really nice uh, thing to do. Because since there's no shuffling of decks in this game unlike Masters, then it means your opponent's never gonna see that card again unless they control for the entire deck. So I'm gonna say there's a decent it's not strong because it still costs four energy to do it. And yeah, you can probably do something more with the energy for that, but this is a very nice one to get two swings in and help deal with any one drops. Because you've got some decks that have some really nice one drops, so you have yellow ones that have uh, one drops like Ginyu that just keep a recurring and draw power, especially with Freezer, where they're hard to remove outside of skills. Well, unless you use skills to remove it. You've got a red just button back things that are waking up, just little one drops you got to then get some swings in. you got got like, green as well, putting their little cantrips, and blue putting like things that peel off back. So there are some really good one drops in the game, and be able to put them back to the bottom of the deck so they don't have access to them again is very nice. Then we've gone to the extra cards. So now we go got the um, three rare extra cards in the deck. I'm oh, sorry, in the set, not the deck. And first one we've got is Final Hope Slash. So this is the like uh, battle trick. Like, I think each color does have a battle trick on your opponent's turn and your turn. So they got one or the other. And with Final Hope Slash, it's a one drop, one cost. And it's battle track on, is you, uh, a your turn battle trick, so offensive battle trick, where uh, you choose one you, you choose your leader or your battle or a battle card, get 20k power for the battle, and then you get an additional effect of choosing up to one battle card when it costs two or less, which is in its hand. And I'm gonna put this as strong because remember it's a one cost um, it's a one cost card and it has the earthling trait. So that means it can be grabbed by Pilaf. And one really nice combo with this and Pilaf is pay one energy for Pilaf to grab this back from your um, drop after you've used it. And then you swing with something, pay one energy, use this, bounce the Pilaf back to your hand, and you've just given 20k to something for two energy. And next turn you can do it again. Pay Pilaf, grab this back, swing, use this, bounce Pilaf back, and keep doing that just over and over again. Have a way for two energy just to get extra 20k swing, every t ex what, extra 20k power on, on that. On any swing, and considering 20k is like put will put your leader at least base to 40k. That then means if they want to out combo it as cheap as possible, they have to go ahead and use a super combo and another card to it. So that's two cards at hand, and you've lost nothing because you use pila. You got, use the pila. All you've done is use some energy, which is not too bad. What if you just lost two cards at hand, and at least one of the, that means one of the super combos is gone. So I think this is a very strong card. 
and yeah, just to peel off making some cards very, very good. Then the next one we've got is Sinister Sickle, and I think this is a very, this is a decent card. Um, not like not strong. It's very, it is a very good effect because it's free energy. Activate main, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards with cost of four or less, and place at the bottom of the deck in any order. Now this is very strong. Like um, it's very strong. In fact, it just bomb decks two, four or less, so it's for free energy, but on up to eight energies worth of cards, being like split over four, four maximum for each, and put them at the bottom of the deck where it is very hard to get access to them again. And that's very good. The only thing is, it does cost free, so it's, again, blue is taking up the majority of your turn, just doing this to help the about board. But it does manage your board. But then, if we look at how meta kind of is with the reveals and stuff, green seems to be like the top color um, going ahead into the meta. And this does really nothing to green because it's not going to be playing for. Well, if you play against androids, it do against that, but then the better two decks, between Broly and Gohan, are the green. Um, it's not going to be do too much to them. So against that, it's not a great color. Uh, well, it's not a great card against that color. But then it's very good against red and yellow, and then even blue uh, doing that. But then the color is a pretty effect, so it's, it's a very good card. But the game is just eaten. And um, so if you, yeah, you eat it for uh, some colors, but then it gets the best color. Until we know if we're going to have like, a pre side or a sideboard. Uh, where it's going to be sided in for those matchups. Currently, it's just decent. And then we have Sinister Shadows as the next one. So, you never a Goku Black card, that, uh, well, Goku, uh, Goku Black uh, Extra, which is a free cost. And this one's activate main skill is if you have three or fewer cards in your hand, choose up to one of your Goku Black battle cards, which is active mode. Now, this is meant to be used in tandem with the um, SR, given it's like a big 40k 6 drop. But the only problem is. Like, uh, you got to play that deck and actually play out those cards. And outside of its own deck, it's not great. And even its own deck is not that great because of how, how, many, like, co like how many cards you have to put together just to pull off a very bad combo. And already this is just trashed here. Like, with that card, it's... With the blue black SR, it's good to resend it for free energy, but you got to wait till turn after you've dropped the SR because the SR is going to be costing you 4 to 5 depending on when you played this master down, if you had the same turn or the turn before and it survived. But this yes, paying 3 inches to restand a card that you got to hope you get out and then survive and wait your turn to do this is not good. So there we have it. So we have for blue. Blue has two strong cards in rare in the rares, two decent cards, two uh, okay cards, and then two trash cards. So from the eight cards in blue. They got two in all but busted. So we still haven't seen a busted card for um, any cards so far in the group in um well in the rare so far. But we're gonna move on to the next two colours and start off with green first. So going straight into the colours, we're gonna go well, we're gonna go with the Android foot stuff first, because we've got the four drop Android Android 18. So it's a 20k. So it's the exact same as the one we saw in the uncommons. A four drop 20k Android 18 Faki combo with his own play being add a card to your add up to one card from your left to your hand, then play up to one Android 17 with a cost of three or less in your drop. Now this is okay. Actually, yeah, it's okay. Because it's a it's an Android, so it, it's just basically good for the an, uh, Android 17 deck because it's never Android the ramp, it's never Android name for things like the Android 16 stuff. But compared to what go Compared to the its ever version in Android 17, the Android 17 targets for this card are ter like aren't great. You've got a two cost crit, two cost crit, which is only 15k. So you normally want to have your opponent swing at your lead to help you awaken as soon as possible, so you can get the big benefit of your lead. And or even then, you're not going to be like taken away from your lead while you just like slowly ramp. And the ever target is a skillless, which you don't really don't really want to be running. So I feel this is okay because it's still a good Android. It can get you um, more more um, more energy worth of cards than the actual energy you pay for it. But the targets for it aren't very good. If there are better targets would be good. Like the Android 17 one's a lot better because it's got better targets. Then we have Android 20. Now this is uh, this is after already um, really say for this one. Because it's a free drop 10k with 10k combo, so it's got good combo power but bad power. And its activate main requires you to KO itself for the cost. And then you get to look at the top 10 cards of your deck. 
and play up to one Dr. Turo lab in your battle area, then place the rest of the deck in the order, in the random order. So you gotta pay free you gotta wait until you got free energy to play this out. You can't really push any pressure because it's only 10k. And then to use the effect you gotta KO itself, which isn't great because you just paid for energy just to kill yourself and not like any benefit from the play. And then look at top 10 cards of your deck and then play a Turo's lab in your battle area. And then shuffle them and put them at the bottom of the deck. So going through 10, you could more likely like through 10, you're gonna have a good chance to hit. But then the only problem is you're paying. F you, it's not a guaranteed way to get Jero's lab to the board. If it was a guaranteed way, it'd be good, but it's not. If you whiff, you've just wasted free energy to not get Jero's lab out, and then you've just put a load of cards, uh, like 10 cards, to the bottom of your deck, shuffled. And if any of those 10, if you are like super combos or like good cards in there, you know they're shuffled to the bottom, and you've got to wait to try and dig through to try and find them because. The androids don't go through the deck very quickly unless you can establish a lot of the two drop SR um, Android 18. So, this is not amazing. I would say it's. Is it? It's, yeah, I'd say it's trash. Because you. Like, it's trash, but then you need to run it so you have. With the um, fill card, so you can actually, like, try and get it. Because it's important to get the fill card out. If you don't get the fill card out, you're going to have a hard time. But it's still a trash card because it can. Is like a very big gamble. You ever find the fill card in your set, you're fine, and you've got a target for it when your next turn when you can um, actually use the effect of the card, depending if you went first or second. And then if you don't hit it, you're just really behind because you just waste the turn trying to have a chance of getting the fill card out and then knock it out. So, yeah, it's going to be a trash card right there. The next one we got is the Goku, the 5 Goku. Now, this one is a very strong card. Because it helps mitigate some of the downsides of some of the of uh, the two Saiyan Green Leaders, in that if they sack off their energy for some effects, they rather than lose the energy, they keep, basically they don't they don't lose it, they keep it, they replace it. Because it's a five drop twenty five k with five k combo, so lack of com lack of combo power, but still not too bad cost uh, combo to cost. Well, sorry, power to cost. And its effect is when it's played or when a card is placed when you drop it, uh, dropping your energy. You add the top card of your deck to your energy rest mode. So as soon as it comes down, it ramps. That's great. As soon as it comes down, it increases your energy, which is good. Because why, like with green, you can kind of at one point stop charging because you know when you play battle cards out, they're going to start ramping for you. So then that way you don't have to worry about charging a card, then playing something. You can just place it, and then gives you energy. So you're kind of establishing a board wall, like increase your energy like you want to do. And this is really nice in that with the Brody Leader, it mitigates its awakened side of having the second energy just to draw. And it mitigates the effect of Gohan's um, effect to suck off energy so it can gain that power boost once you play this turn. So this is a very nice one. Just comes down and run straight away. And if you get multiple, if you get two of them on board at the same time, you're then inc you're then plusing energy every time you then suck off energy for an effect, which is really nice. I've not really seen anybody get down two at the same time because normally it's removed as quickly as possible when it's dropped to like kind of get rid of that benefit to the player. But um, yeah, it's a very good, very good card. Then next one we've got, we go into the Gohan cards. We've got two ones, two for Gohan. We got the first one being a five drop 30k. That's uh, got 10k combo. And on play, you choose a 20 opponent's battle card to energy cost of four or less and remove it. Okay. Now this is straight away strong. It's very good for five energy, you're, which is nothing really in green because you're ramping it is a ramp, uh, energy ramp color. You're playing at a 30k and Popping something for less than your opponent's board. And that's normally a unless you're, unless you're against green. There's not gonna be many cards you're gonna hit in green with this. But at least in green it's an end take combo to have, kind of like combo out easier. Like it's, it's got everything going for it. It's got good power to cost, it's got good combo power, and it's got good effect, just pops it for less, especially against any other colour. Or they're like establishing the board to try and rush you, you can just play us down, pop it, and then you start controlling their board. Very good. And then the other go home we've got is the six drop 35k. That has 5k combo power and it's got on play and the top card of your deck to your life. Now, I'm gonna say this is busted. Like, people might not agree that it's busted, maybe that it's strong, but I feel this is busted just because ramping is like ramping is what the colours do. Like, green in this game is the ramp colour, where in, I think in, well, at least in Masters, it was in blue. And it's so six energy, which is a lot. But then the fact is, when you get like when you go into later games against Green, like if you start like when Green gets to later games, it could be hard to it's very hard to kill them. 
because while you're just spending like ages trying to like knock a life, if you spend a whole turn run and just basically damage and one, and then spend a load of cards trying to like put one damage in, the next turn they can just go play this, heal that life you just did down, like heal the damage you just did, and now they got a 35k, which is hard to remove because there's not many ways to remove a six drop with effect, like with effects. And being an attack into it, wasting a lot of resources and the shipping was like big, to swing over it. And this is just every turn. This is just gonna, like this comes down, heals your life, so it's harder to kill you, and hits for 35k. And if you get in combination in like the mirror with green, with the Ender 16, the Ender 16 is impossible to move remove in against green with um without KOing it. And that able is able to then block an attack, play this out to heal your life, so potentially potent two damage by blocking one damage and then healing you so you can take that damage if you're in a tight spot. Now this is a very good card, like healing in a ramp cut in like in a deck is very good. And this is never a new card like a nice card with Broly where if you mitigate like the kind of downside of having to ramp a uh, ramp a card from your life to your energy to awaken and go for straight from four to three just to awaken. This kind of mitigates it so when you awaken you can start healing yourself while being a big bot a big body. So then we bring to the next one being Trunks. So this one is a free cost 20k, 5k combo, a blocker, and it will win one KO effect off your leader's Song Go and Childhood as up card of your deck to your energy. Now this is only decent against uh, one colour and that's green. And then against green, there's no way to really KO this without or get rid of this without KOing it. But the thing is every colour is yellow's gonna rest it, blue's gonna bounce it, red's gonna neg it, and Negative doesn't trigger uh, when KO'd, so I feel this is this is just okay. Because actually no, no, I feel it's gonna be trash. It's trash because it's so many ways. Like it's only good against green, and you got ever ways to you got ever ways to ramp, especially in stage you got ever ways to ramp with the extra guy and things like that. This is a nice one for um, Gohan, but. I don't see it being that great, like, because it can always get. It's only against Green Mirror, which Green Mirror is probably then quite difficult anyway, like quite a weird one anyway. But this is just not great. Then we got the last card in green, and being the only rare extra card, and that is the and that's the ever fill card being Dro's Lab. So there's a free cost fill card with an activate main with by paying one green, switching this card to rest mode if your leader is Android 17, and a top card of your uh, the card with Android 20 special trait from your drop to your energy. And it doesn't, because it doesn't say in rest mode or anything spec specify, it comes in active mode. So essentially with this, this is a really nice card because then you're ramping energy every turn. You're not getting access to use that energy, well you're getting access to use that energy straight away. But then you have had to tap an energy to gain it. So every turn with this, you're increasing the number of energy, but you're keeping the amount of energy you have to use for that turn the same as when you started. So I feel this is a pretty strong ramp because it's because this is very good consistent ramp because it's just grabbing energy, an Android card from your drop, placing the energy and ramping consistently every turn. You don't have to draw into a card to uh, once you get this down, you know, like it's difficult to find to get this down. But you find it and get it down, it's just consistent ramp every turn because you can just combo off defensively or offensively to make sure that's a target. Or your opponent popping like killing anything on your board to trigger it. It's really nice. And there's easy way like there's a good engine with Androids to be able to fluctuate to make sure you always got a target to use this. And it just means as you get on, you're increasing your energy more and more for free without worry, and then playing bigger things and even multiple bigger things at the same time as well. So it's a very strong card because it's just that consistent ramp, but uh, you just gotta find it first. So before we get into the last color, just a little review of green. So we've got family wood green. They do have one basic card in the Gohan that heals your life, which is amazing. Just green having a way to like access to more life than any other color. Three strong cards being the Go a five drop Goku, five drop Gohan, and the Android fill card. No really decent cards, just one busted and three strong cards. One okay card in the Android 18 because it's not got very good targets, and then two trash cards in the Chiro that finds you the fill card and the Trunks uh, blocker. So now we move into the last color in yellow, and this one's my favorite color and the best game, and that's the Ginyu Force. And speaking of Ginyu Force, we have four previous members in here, and these two bits in here. Start off with the um, Ginyu one. So, Ginyu, this Ginyu is a 2 cost 20k, no common power, but it's got on play, look at the top 5 cards of your deck. Then revolt to one non-Ginyu card with Ginyu Force and special traits, and add it to your hand. 
then place the rest of the bomb you deck in any in a random order. Now we always feel like is I feel this is um this is a very, I feel this is a strong one. Uh, yeah, I feel this is a strong one because it's a search here, like we've got like a search is quite fine, it's just basically make sure like most of the time if you're playing Ginyu stuff, you're playing a fair few long you have some really good ones like Raccoon, Gordo, and you've got as well Jace as well. And you've got the extra cards as well that also include so And just coming down replacing it with a card and this being a two cost 20k, like it's a searcher which is always good. It doesn't have any combo power, but then it's still good cost for good cost for its uh, good power for its cost. And then a good effect to actually find a fair and it's got a lot of targets you can get. So this is quite strong. Like this zero combo power does does lack, but then you still work it's coming down as a 20k that can threaten even awakened leaders and replacing yourself with some good targets. And one of those cards it can grab is the next one being Gordo. So this one for yellow, like because of the archetype and stuff, I would say this is also a I'll say this is also a strong card, Gordo. Like it's a two cost, only five K combo, so it's very weak. In a, uh, uh, sorry, only five K power. Does have ten K combo in it, so um, it's kind of it's good to combo with as well because ten K combo. And its effect is activate main switch card, the rest mode. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, uh, rest of battle cards, and you can't switch to active mode in your opponent's next turn. So it's really nice in that you can lock it down, lock, lock something down, and keep it from being a. Uh, Attacking next turn, just keep it in rest. Like if your opponent brings like a drops a big battle card, and you want to stop it from being attacked next turn, just for two energy, drop this down, and then stop it from being an attack. And the nice thing is with like the freezer lead, you can restand it so that way because it switches to rest mode, and until you can restand it, so you can use it again next turn to keep something locked down forever. And at the very least, tanky combo, and you can also free play it out with a raccoon as well, which we'll go over in a little bit because it's one of the cards left up to still see, and. Like you, could, it's just really nice with Ginyu for us. Like even he's got like a nice little archetype. If you go with like Raccoon, bring it out so you can then swing with Raccoon, use his lockdown, then restand them both with our uh, Freezer. And then because it's a Ginyu for us, it also counts towards uh, the like we saw the now you see the power of Ginyu for us. So like one two Ginyu for us for K one two, and also as well, it's a never freeze army to go with uh, Ginyu as well. So it's never such a cool thing for Ginyu, and it's just a very nice card. And then we got the next one being Shield. Now this one I feel, I feel like this one is trash. There's no reason you would run this because it's just a free cost, 20k, 5k combo with a permanent where turn your opponent's turn all your battle cards, freeze the clan, uh, special traits, gain 5k power. Now you don't really care about gaining 5k power defensively, and you don't want to be paying free just to have that effect. Like I don't see any point where this card is useful to help. Uh, Defend a little bit, like you make your freezes defend, like freezes king colds, and even itself stronger defensively. But you want to be more aggressive with the uh, those freezer clans more than defending. You want to be paying for this, like it seems what waste of free energy for what else you can do with that amount of energy in the color. Now we move on to one of the other, I never freezer clan, and that is Mecha Freezer. So Mecha Freezer is a five cost, 25k. Take a combo with on play being play up to one King Cold, it costs four from your hand. Now, currently for this, the King Colds we've got are both four costs. One's a skillless, and one is the SR blocker from the Star Deck, which one KO'd uh, Pop Sync in rest mode four or less. But then that just means that for five energy, you get nine energy worth of cards, which is very good. Like nine energy worth of card for five energy, and you're either getting a 25k swing. Or a 30 or a 25k swing, depending on what King Cold you use. And they're both King Colds and this Freezer are both 10k's, so at least that's two 10k combos you're getting. So you bring out 5 energy, 9 energy worth of uh, power, swinging for 25 and 25 or 30k. Then with, free, with the Freezer leader, restanding them so they're 10, 20k worth of combo power to defend with. Now I feel this is decent because it's not strong, because even though you bring out a lot of, like a lot more co like power, or a lot more costing of uh, cost of cards. For five energy, like you're getting nine energy worth of cards for five energy. It's just the fact that it's it's not strong because of the fact that there's not many targets for it. Like it's only got currently two targets, so unless we get more targets in the future that have more beneficial effects, I can get it can get better. But at the moment, it's decent because it's got good targets, but it's not the best. 
And then we got the last battle card for yellow before we move on to the extra cards being Raccoon, and this is definitely a strong card. The Ginyu Force start cards. I might be biased because I do love Ginyu Force, but I feel this is a strong card because free energy, it's doing a lot because it's free energy, free cost, 20k, so it's not it's decent comp power for cost. 5k combo, which is not too bad. And it's on players, add up to one card from your life to your hand. Then play up to one battle card with cost two or less and gain you force it special traits from your hand. So this can play out the that gain the rare gain you there, and then well, it can come down and take a life so it help you awaken as well. Then play out a uh, two cost gain you, so play out gain you, and that'll look at the software cards to find a non gain you gain you force card among them, add to your hands. So you then getting 220k's out to attack with and potentially helping awaken, taking a life, and finding a card. Bring out Ghoul, then lock something down, what then it can attack. So lock something down and attacking for free energy. You can play out the SR Ginyu, which then, if you've got a never Ginyu uh, freeze army apart from those two on board, well, apart from uh, Ginyu and Raccoon on board, then untap two more energy, but be locked out playing Ginyu cards for the turn, which is very good. So you paid one energy for 220k's. That's really nice. And you got Bursa, which is a skillless, you can drop out their option. And you got Jace, which isn't, yeah, which you'd rather just pay the energy for. But then it just this kind of just makes a really nice little like Ginyu core for any yellow deck, being you can run this, Gordo, and the SR Ginyu along with some extra Ginyu extra cards. Just have a nice little tiny engine, not just for free and like the best thing is just paying free energy for this. While well, you've already got Freeze Army on board. Play the SR Ginyu, untap two, and then for one energy you've paid two twenty Ks to swing with, put a lot of aggressive pressure, and if you can do it every turn, that's amazing. And just, just a very strong card, very strong yellow card with nice little, nice strong core with the Ginyu Force stuff. Nothing more to be said. Then we come on to the extra card. So starting off with the first one is Bonds the Ginyu Force, and this one I feel is busted because it's a one, it's a battle trick, it's a one cost battle trick, and we battle. Choose your leader up to one of your battle cards. It gets 10k power for the turn for the battle. Sure, one energy, 10k, but then. That card also gets 5k power for the battle for each card with Ginyu Force and its special traits among your leader and battle cards. So the more Ginyu Force you have, the stronger this gets. And considering the Ginyu Force, like we say, Raccoon and stuff like that, can spam themselves out, you can get up to huge costs. I've got, I've had this card be something that gives extra 60k, like 60k power to one card, so it could be a one cost 60k power boost. Which is amazing, especially with uh, that's one thing I love about the Ginyu Force that you can drop them down, go wide with your board, and then when you put it against one, start just getting those hits in, reduce the card, reduce the power, and if one of you spam extra 60k, or like 50 to 60k on a battle card to finish, like he even swung with a Gordo after they've defended all the ever swings, and then Gordo's then gone in for like 60 to 70k um, power like for his attack. Because of this and say combo cards, and even getting two of these together on the last swing, that's 100k with just two cards. Well, over 100k with two cards, which is amazing. And because you, know, you got this quite a nice, good, like, nice Ginyu core, you can at least get this for one energy. Being like, at least if you play this with um, go Rakuum into the SR Ginyu on tap, and then swing this at least for one energy 20k, and even more if you have already Ginyu, or, like the one drop Ginyu or Ginyu uh, Gordo on board, you can get to like 25 to 30k. Just with that little core, just for um, which is really nice. Just as it goes on any card, just it counts the Ginyu Force cards, and with, even with the lead as well, with the actual Ginyu Ginyu lead, that's additional. Like just with that, it's all it instantly just 15k minimum on its own, which is really good. And then we've got the next one being Supernova. So this is never battle trick, but this one is only usable during your turn. So it's a one cost battle, anti battle, your turn. Choose your leader or one of your battle cards. It gets 20k power for the uh, battle. And the additional effect is then you choose up to one of your opponent's rest of battle cards, which costs four or less, and it can't switch to active motion your opponent's turn. Now, this is quite nice. I thought this is decent. If it could be either player's turn, I feel that would be quite strong. But it's only during your turn, so it's, it's dead defensively. You can't even use it to defend yourself, which is. Uh, not the best, and you've got to use an energy to actually use this as well, which kind of hinders you from playing like m like bigger things in like you know, like unless you're on curve, or just focusing on more like small thing like uh, go wide with some, like uh, go slowly with things. Um, you can really get the best benefit of it because you it's not really searchable. It's not really search for freezer clans. It's not recyclable. Like that's one of the best thing about Final Hope Slash is that in blue it's recyclable with uh, Pinaf. 
but Supernova's not. So you got to draw into this. It's not searchable by any like any effect, and you could use it offensively. But it's nice that it puts in a 20k power. It means that's like a super combo to cut like a the super combo level of power offensively, and it does knock something down. But it's only four less, which uh, once again against the the best color in the game currently is green, which plays more like five five cost and higher cards. Which so this won't do much against it. And the other cards. There's not many things you want to like lock down that like that makes it feel worth it, but you can just pop them or keep them locked down, or just attack into them. The voice is decent. Um, if it was Era player's turn, it would be quite strong to then defend, potentially defend 20k and lock something down. It's quite nice. That would be better, but certainly just decent. And this brings us to the last of the um, yellow extras and the yellow cards being body change. Now this is a one cost. And I remember when we saw this from the spoilers and people try to translate with Google Translate, it seemed absolutely busted because it seemed like you could rest one of your opponent's cards and sap one of yours, which seemed like it would be absolutely nuts. Until we got the English spo English uh, spoilers, uh, what well, English reveals, and it kind of dashed at hopes because of the one cost. Activate main slash battle, so you can now activate it during your main phase or in combat. And it's choose one of your activate activate well, choose one of your active mode battle cards, which is rest mode. And then you get to choose to one of your opponents to one of your battle cards with a cost of four or less, which is the rest switch to active mode. So essentially what you need to do is as a cost, rest one of your one of your battle cards, then choose one of your other battle cards at four or less and untap it. Now I would say that's I would say it's decent as well. Like I'm not just putting it up like a decent like higher up because it's Ginyu Force. Like it is nice that it can be searchable by uh, for Ginyu because say uh well, it's a freeze army card, so it can be like found off the top by Apple. It can be searched by the Ginyu there, because it's a Ginyu Force, it's a non Ginyu Ginyu Force card. And it has some nice benefits because you've got the SR Freezer, which is a 4 cost 40k, and you can use that, you can use it on that to re stand it after it's attacked by switching a weenie to moot. So you can essentially switch a weenie card to rest on top of 40k, that can attack, so make it attack again. So it's a nice little benefit that. But there's not that's already a big benefit of this, like this and the caller SR you can use to untap because it's only restricted to four or less. But it's a nice little trick to with some of the cards in yellow to be restand, like switch a weenie to rest just to make a restand a bigger thing to swing with it as well. So it's decent and it could be more targets in the future that could be a lot better with it as well. So that is it for all the rares for, today, for this video. So we've gone through all the rares and just a little recap of what we've got. So we found that in rares there's two busted cards, being the five six drop Gohan that heals your life, and the Ginyu Battle Trick. Then we got a fair few strong, so we got a lot more strong cards than we have decent or like in the lower tiers for this for rares. So rares are actually actually quite nice. So we got the Gohan Trunks, Final Hope Slash, Five Drop Goku, Five Drop Gohan, the Android Fill card, and then the uh, two got drop Ginyu and then Golden and Riku being quite strong cards. Then decent rares we've got is Krillin, Fua, 4 Drop Vegeta, Syn Sinister Sickle, Mecha Freezer, and then we've got Supernova and Body Change. The new T cards are more like situational, like the Frost and Matama being more situational for red to have against yellow. Vegeta being like okay card to go aboard, and then Goku Black being an okay free drop. And then we've got the Trunks and the Android 18 being 4 cost that just are okay. And then the trash cards from rare, rare, like I think for the other colours we only had like one of each. Color had a trash card, but we can see once again every color has trash cards, just some have more near us. Like we got the Torn Power Arena being trash for red, we got the Two Drop Goku and Sin of Shadows as trash cards for blue, Dodoro and Trunks being trash cards for green, and then Chill being a trash card for yellow. So every card still get every color still has a trash card in rares, but then we at least got two busted cards in rares compared to the other ones. So that's it for the rares. So thank you for watching. Let me know, like you can, remember to like this video if you do do like these ranking videos to go over like the for the rarities. I think it's nice to go with rarities so when new, new players come into it, they kind of have a perspective to see kind of what cards are strong in the colours, like uh, yeah, what cards are strong in the colours, kind of what helps, kind of help you out with deck building and playing as well. And also remember to comment down below if there's anything you agree if you agree with any of these choices, where they're placed, or if you disagree, so we can kind of like get a discussion going and see if like. If there's if anybody's got a view that I I didn't think of to make it like so these can go up a tier or look below a tier. 
But that is it for uh, today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one when we go over the super rares and maybe the secret rares as well in the same one. Don't know yet. But that is it. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.